Okay, this is going to be a tutorial on how to use RL streams. And I just installed Reshade with Bacchus mod on the Epic version of Rocket League. So this is gonna be a fresh install. So we're, I'm gonna walk you guys through step by step how to do this. First, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get some links ready. A okay, first link is this, the instruction manual of RL streams. So you can always refer to this page and you know further read the instructions than what I'm already giving you. Next link is going to be the actual plugin that you're gonna download. And then the final link is going to be this, the camera layers timer map. You'll see later on how we're gonna use it. First, what we're gonna do is the requirements for RL streams is you need 5.4 and above reshade. So on Rocket League, I actually have 6.1. So if you don't have anything above 5.4, you have to just get a new, ver just get the newest version. That's all you have to do is just get the newest version. Okay. Next, we're gonna download this K-Light codec pack. I found that using the Mega Pack is what's best. You just go to server one and then download this and then just keep everything defaulted. Next is we're going to download the RL streams. You just click this, boom, already done. Next, what we do is we go extract it. I'm pretty sure I have extracted, but I'm gonna extract it anyways. 2.0 V, okay. Once we have installed the RL streams or extracted the files of the RL streams, we're gonna go to plugins, DLL. Next, we're gonna go to Bacchus mod, open folder, plugins, and you're just gonna drag this DLL into here. I already have it, but I'm gonna replace it anyways. Once we put the DLL in the Bacchus Month folder, we're gonna open the shaders, go back to Rocket League, copy this path, and then paste it on this folder, which I already did. Uh, then we go to the shaders folder. We drag this RL Streams FX shader into here. Okay. And then we'll we're gonna go back to Rocket League, we're going to reload. Then we're gonna open the console. Oops, F6 console. Plugin, space load, RL streams. Okay. Go back in the reshade and check the add-ons to see if it's there. It should pop up. Now we go to plugins, RL streams. Boom. We got it. Okay. Now let's just go into a random replay. Once we're in the replay, we're going to open RL streams and we're going to direct where the outputs of the RL streams to where we want it. So I already made a folder for this. I'm just going to copy and paste. You don't have to make, you just name the file, whatever. It doesn't have to be named camera, unlike with Cinebuddy. Um, let's just do POV tests. Okay. And then how RL streams works is in each map is a different mesh. So let's say for instance that we wanna only select the cars, the toppers, the antennas, and then the ball, but keep everything else, keep everything else like it has it doesn't have its own pass. So what we should do, we just keep reverse the preview our custom pass, debug our models. Debugging our models essentially just lets us see which model that we're choosing, like the flower petal or the flower and then the stem are two different objects. So if you just keep going next, you, you can see how it's just choosing each individual object. And we just have to scroll through until we see a, the wheels. Yep. And then we add to custom pass. Oops. Oh yeah, and we preview. Add to custom pass. Get the car, oops, get the topper, get the stem, there we go, stem. And then let's say I forgot to get the ball, get the ball real quick, oh, there's the ball. Okay, now, so now that we got our pass, we wanna make it a different color than the scene that we 
are looking at uh, either blue, red, or green are probably the best colors, not pink, since Keylight doesn't really like pink. I found that somewhere around around here. Yep, yeah. this exact code right here is the best for green screens. Once we have our pass, we have to get set up our recording. So if we go into the bindings tab, we have to make bindings for our RL stream start for when we start the recording and our RL stream stop for when we're ready to stop the recording. So I just put it on my brackets just to add a new one. You just look up RL stream start, make sure you save. And then to make it work, we have to look up RL streams in the effect. I have two of them because I just have two different ones in the same folder. Um, make sure that, let's say if you have any effects, that RL streams is on the bottom of all your effects. So let's just do bloom, fuck it. Activate the top. Um, what else? Clarity, boom. Cinematic DOF, boom. Okay, maybe not. So not that maybe not that but you get the idea make sure that RL streams is on the bottom of all your effects so that it doesn't interact with any other effect we want to tell RL streams what FPS to record at changing this doesn't do anything because it caps at 30 we have to when we set this to 30 we also have to keep our video recording to the same in RL streams 30 but we don't want that so it's best to keep this at 60. So we turn our reshade on. You have to have reshade on for it to work. And I'm gonna press left bracket, which is my recording. And it's gonna be doing this. Okay, that's my recording. Turn the reshade off. Now, what will it will give you is, to close this. It will give you these AVIs, which is the biggest file type and we don't want that because that takes ages to render so what we're going to do is we're going to open media encoder if you're trying to trim like how i'm doing 221 well at least for me is where it starts the actual recording so and make sure that you double your frame rate to 60 because it will be set to 30 if we match the source if if we match the source we don't want that so we just want to choose our preset, which is this, oops, no, this one, yeah, which is 60 FPS, maximum depth, maximum render, and we are press 1 and 100 megabytes. Oh my goodness. Once we have our footage converted into MP4s, we can probably delete these, we don't need them anymore. Let's import our footage. Yeah, let's just say that's our thing. Make sure that our composition is set to 30 because that's what the Cinebuddy is capped at. It's capped at 30. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-comp, pre-compose, leave all attributes. We go to scripts, run script, the RL streams. It's, it has its own RL streams imported. We go to our footage. Double click this, and unlike with Cinebuddy, it won't come with the floors, or the walls, or the ceiling, or the goals. It will only come with the camera and the cardinals, so once we have it here, we just have to align it a little bit, which is you know, just a tiny bit, yeah, ooh, too much, yeah. Yeah, it looks about right. So let's just trim our footage. Now we go back into the comp, which is timing mapped. Now with this plugin, camera layers timing map, you need ZXP installer to install it. What ZXP installer is, is basically a better way to install scripts and everything else alongside. But when you have it, it should be on the window extensions here. So now we generate, we first click on our comp and then we generate what we want, which is basically everything in there. It's not really a lot, so it doesn't matter. 
now we have our layers. It might be just a bit off, like yeah, like right there. So we have to fix it a tiny bit. Yeah, right there. And now what we can do is we can pre-compose this. We don't need these. We just only need our camera. We get our depth. Bring it in here. Hold the entire map. Since it's the same, so if you cut it the same, it should be already aligned. There's no reason to change anything. Now, what might be weird is the green screen. As you can see, the green screen is not 100% aligned. And that's because RL Streams can't record the green screen on the same frame as the original Cine in your depth. So it has to record one frame off. And it's always gonna be one frame off. To mitigate how bad the misalignment is, is you have to record at a lower speed. The lower the speed, the less that this is visible. That's a good thing to know when you're trying to align the green screen sometimes, that it just looks misaligned when it's turning the camera or it does some weird camera movement. You just have to lower the speed and then it just gets closer to perfect, but it, it won't be perfect. But uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty much does it. And you can do a lot more things. This is this has a lot of potential, a lot of time savings of recording, re-recording, doing all that bullshit. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.